Thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm really honored by this. You know, um, there's nothing sweeter than receiving an award from your peers. And um, the ITG has always been a big part of my life and a very special thing. And so many hundreds of trumpet players that I've come to know have been through ITG. And um, I'm, I'm sure many of you have the same experiences. It's a wonderful organization, and this will be very treasured to me. Um, so thank you very much. So we'd like to move on. Well, let's talk about trumpet, my favorite thing. And um, we, we have a number of things to talk about. And what I'd like to do is uh, deal with a particular subject, ask you if you have any questions about that particular thing, and then we move to the next one. And we're going to play a couple more pieces and so forth. Um, hopefully at the end there will be maybe a little time for some general questions, um, but we'll have to see. Um, all of you should have received, hopefully, a co copy of the Anitra's dance that I just played. It's kind of my way of giving you a gift and thanking you for, for coming to my program and to introduce you to my new publishing company, Hickman Music Editions, which opened its website uh, a little over a week ago, about a week and a half ago. And uh, I hope you'll check it out. There are some, some very old pieces that have been out of print that are now back in print. There are a lot of pieces that uh, maybe are still available but have had uh, quite a few uh, mistakes in them that have hopefully been corrected. And a series of orchestral excerpt books that, that are new and badly needed uh, today. So take a look at that. They also, with the, uh, the piece of music, if you have it handy, I'd like to refer to that some in the clinic because it does have some, some issues that we can talk about with the clinic. The first being um, just the general support of sound. When I hear somebody talk about, um, oh, I use too much mouthpiece pressure, or someone says, well, your problem is you don't use enough air. You know, I always want to say, well, that may be true, but it's hard to sometimes pinpoint what the real problem is because it's really a total machine. There are so many factors involved in playing the trumpet. The main ones, of course, are the facial muscles, the lips themselves, the position of the lower jaw, the level of the tongue inside the mouth, um, the size and shape of the aperture of the lips, um, the volume of air that you're flowing through the instrument, the compression of the air that goes through the lips, and the mouthpiece pressure. These are all factors which need to be very delicately fine-tuned in order to give you the exact sound on the exact pitch with, with the exact intonation that you want to achieve. So it, there's a lot of constant variables. And um, to me, it's like focusing a camera. Of course, nowadays, it's all these digital cameras that do everything for you. But you know, if you can think back to the older cameras, uh, professional cameras that had several lenses, and you had to adjust one for the distance, one for the f actual focus on that distance, then you had to set, set the shutter speed to, mount the, to, to allow the correct amount of light to come into the camera. So there, if any of those variables were off, then the photo isn't perfect. And it's, or like flying an airplane. It has the wind speed, you know, the rudders and the controls. Everything has to be just right. And considering the, the size of the aircraft, the weight of the aircraft, all these factors fed into computers nowadays. But it used to be, you know, the pilot trying to figure it out and then take off. And, and so what I try to do really is uh, just look for the telltale signs of what the problem might be. 
not really trying to second guess what I think it is. Um, and I think the more you do with your teaching, and then of course we're all teaching ourselves, um, you can start to look for these problems uh, and begin to identify them. For instance, if the lips are too relaxed, they're too loose, or not enough pucker, as some people say, then the tone lacks fullness and, and center of the tone. And sometimes it even has a lack of control. Um, if the lips are too tight, you get a very pinched tone. If the lower jaw is too low, you get a, a, a real spread, dull spread sound. If the jaw, lower jaw is too high, maybe you clench your teeth, then you get a very nasal sound in the middle and low registers. Sometimes it sounds like a duck. And if you remember those old Spike Jones recordings, the Spike Jones band, there was a trombone player that would play low notes and he would clench his teeth and sound whack, 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 whack. It sounds just like a duck, you know? It's very humorous. But that's, that's uh, another telltale sign of maybe somebody clenching their teeth in the middle and low register. Uh, if you use too little mouthpiece pressure, um, all kinds of problems. You get a weak tone, uh, you lose control. If you use too much mouthpiece pressure, you get a very dead sound. There's no life to the sound at all. And, and then if the, if the level of the tongue, the vowel sounds we use, if it's too low, you get a very flat sound. So even though you might push your tuning slide to the correct place where the tuner says you're in tune, it still sounds flat because it's so dull, you know, and it's probably the tongue position. Conversely, if the tongue is too high, sometimes it sounds sharp even though it's tuned correctly to the, to the tuner. Um, I think it's important to always play with a centered sound, that is, the, the aperture itself, the opening, needs to be as small as possible to play a given pitch. Obviously, low notes are, will be a larger aperture, higher notes a smaller aperture. Um, we want to keep it as small as we can. That's why soft practice is so important. The players I find that play loud all the time, that's all they do, they can't play soft and they wonder why. Well, all they get, their lips are too far apart and they sound like this. You know, they're just, everything's so open, of course, you know. We need to get it as close as we can, so very, very delicate soft playing, what I call whisper tones are really good. Uh, just as soft as you can play, like a clarinet playing really a, a subtone, as they call it. Um, if you take a decibel meter, I have one in my office, a decibel meter measures uh, volume, and there's a, a needle. And so to go from, if you play a crescendo from absolute zero, which of course is no sound at all, to maybe 80 decibels, it's very easy. That's basically 